Hello everyone, we we are almost at the very last stage of our uh, course here and we have learned most of the basic things and uh, we have learned about structural designs as well and in this lecture we will be learning about how we can integrate different design elements to make a subsystem of our own. Now while designing a subsystem, the approach that we use is called top-down approach. What we do is we take a complex function which we need to design. We divide it into smaller parts which are less complex. And uh, then we execute this, we build or execute this smaller part separately. And then we combine all of this to make the entire system. So in doing so, we try to exploit the concurrency. What is concurrency? Suppose the same thing is required by multiple uh, multiple uh, logic gates. For example, let us uh, uh, very simple. Uh, let us observe it by a very simplified uh, of, uh, explanation. Suppose we have this uh, this block which performs, which has two inputs and two outputs. It gives the results of first, uh, which has three inputs and two outputs. The first output is a bar b, and the second output is a bar c. Now we have A, B, C here and the output F1, F2, F1 and F2 here. Now what we can do is we can do, we can uh, A bar B and F1 we can do it like this. Again we, we take this A. Uh, we take this A from there, we take another inverter and connect it to C and we get F2. This can be done, we are requiring two inverters or another thing can be done is we delete this part of it, this connection and what we do is we take the output from here and we can share this inver uh, this single inverter between these two similarly the subsystem or the sub functions that will be built each sub function can be shared by multiple sub functions and this is how we this is called concurrency and this concurrency should be exploited or it should be used as many times and in as many places as possible uh, why is that because if we use this uh, uh, the more we use this for example for this example the more we use this inverter the more this inverter is getting utilized. If you use more inverters or you use the same sub function uh, again and again, then the ADR requirement rises and each of the function uh, sub functions are not utilized to their maximum potential. Uh, that is why we want to exploit the concurrency. And we want interactions between the sub parts to be minimized. That is, uh, we have one sub part here and one sub part here. Their interaction should be as less as possible because when two sub functions are actually connected there are a lot of issues that uh, comes into pain because everything is clocked so as a result the clock syncing becomes an issue and delay becomes an issue and all the other issues are there as a result we want the uh, interaction between these sub parts uh, to be as low as possible now in design approaches we can use com conventional circuit symbols or block diagram approach we can use logic symbols like we have used here and gate and not gate we can use tick diagram or we can use a mixture of tick diagram logic sim uh, symbols and circuit symbols we can do that too we can use mask layouts we can use architectural block diagrams or we can even use floor plans now uh, in our example we'll make a 4-bit arithmetic processor 4-bit arithmetic processor, what does it do? It uh, it takes two inputs and gives the output. The inputs, each of the inputs are 4-bit and the outputs are even 4-bit. And it can perform uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and such tasks. And it can perform some logical operations as well. So in, if we want to make arithmetic processor, the uh, the biggest pro bigger problem or the subsystem is the arith making arithmetic processor. Now we have to divide it into sub functions. What can those sub, sub functions be? Uh, a sub function can be a memory where the results or results or outputs will be stored. 
subfunction can be data path or arithmetic logical unit and registers where all the arithmetic and logical operations are performed and data are temporarily stored which goes in uh, this temporarily to, uh, to, uh, data will go into the memory where it will be permanently stored we have a control block this control block will de uh, will decide what will be the what will be op uh, the operation that will be executed on the data will it be addition or subtraction or multiplication these inf instructions will be given by the control block again another set of instruction as in what to do with the result should it be stored in the memory or not these all will be controlled by the control block and we will have input and output block from where we take the input and also we show the output and all these data and all these blocks will communicate to, with each other using the data bus. And or the control block will see, send control signal to all the blocks using control bus. So this, uh, so we had one big issue, one big problem or one big uh, subsystem that needed to be designed. We have divided into four or more uh, smaller sub functions, which will be easier for us to implement. Now. First part, uh, first part that we are we are going to look at is data paths. Data paths is basically arithmetical logical unit plus registers. That is uh, uh, register. That is there is a temporary memory available and there is arithmetic and logical unit available. Now this this thing uh, can be designed in three ways. At first, let us look what it does. It takes input uh, it takes an input into the arithmetic and logical unit that input may come from the registers or uh, from the output of the arithmetic and logical unit itself from those input it computes the result and sends the result to the shifter that shifter again sends the output to the register to be stored temporarily that is input uh, input to the alu can come from the register uh, temporary memory already available in the register or it may come from the output of the ALU in the previous cycle, uh, previous uh, uh, operations which is stored in the register. Uh, now this this simple task can be done in three different ways. If we erase these lines, it will be a problem. This thing can be done in three different ways. For the first ways we see at first first operand from registers come to ALU. Operand is stored here. First operand is get. What is operand? Suppose we want to do A is a 4 bit number, B is a 4 bit number. We want to perform A plus B. A is an operand, B is an operand. So in the first cycle, the first step operand comes from register to ALU. In the second cycle, second operand comes from register to ALU. In the ALU, these operands are added or any other function which we wanted to do, it, it is done. And the result is stored temporarily in ALU. In the third cycle, the result is passed to a shifter, and that shifter it sends the result back to the register where it is stored temporarily. That is, we are performing the work in three cycles. Uh, we can minimize the cycle uh, clock cycles required for doing the same work by using two two data buses, bus A and bus B. If you are using two data buses, then what happens in a single cycle first operand can go in go in this way to the alu second operand can go in this way uh, to the alu in the same clock cycle and in the same clock cycle alu will perform operation that is say addition or subtraction of a and b and produce the result now this result in the next clock uh, next clock cycle will be passed to the shifter to so bus b and the shifter will pass through bus A, the shifter will pass the result to, uh, to the register where it will be stored. So the same operation that was done here using three, block, uh, three clock cycles, here it is being done using two clock cycles. Then again, it can be done using one clock cycle as well. See, we have two parallel bus, uh, buses, four bit buses. Uh, what it does is this register passes uh, operand A, this again operand B to these two different buses to the ALU. ALU perform the operation and uh, the operation result is sent to shifter. The shifter again sends the data to another bus to the register. Here we have three buses. 
as we can see as we are increasing the number of buses all everything here is done in one clock cycle so the increase in number of buses is actually decreasing the number of clock, clock cycles required and uh, that is increasing the speed and at the same time with the increase of speed the complexity also increases so while designing the data paths we have to we have to think about the trade off between the speed and complex complexity of the system now we have to design the shifter we have a 4 bit shifter that needs to be designed and the shifter can uh, while designing the shifter we can keep certain things in mind that is the shifter can shift towards right the shifter can shift towards left now this shifter is end round shifter what does end round shifter means end round shifter means suppose we have 101 1 as input we want to shift it towards the right by one bit then it will this one will come here and everything will be shifted accordingly so we'll get 1101 1. if we want to shift now if we want to shift this one towards left by one bit it would have begun and uh, this one would have gone there and we would have gotten 0 1 1 1 that is we will shift we can shift it both in the right and left directions and uh, that the digit that goes out of the four bit is included from the opposite side that is if it goes out to right it is included in the leftmost digit if it goes out to left it is included in the rightmost digit this is how end round shift registers work now why you are using end round shift register end round shift register gives us an advantage what is the advantage suppose we want to shift something right so we are building a shift register with which we can shift that thing right so 1011 becomes 1101 by one right shift again if we want to shift this into uh, uh, shift this thing the same thing uh, by three bits into the left what happens at first it will become 0 1 1 1 then it will become 1 1 1 0 then it will become 1 1 0 1 so we are shifting it three bits left and getting 1 1 0 1 which is the result of shifting by one bit towards the right that is we can do left shift and right shift both uh, both by a single operation that is one bit right shift is equivalent to three bit left left shift so what we do is we do not uh, we do not design a separately right shifter and left shifter we design a single shifter say right shifter and if we want to shift left le uh, in the left direction uh, for one bit shifting, we shift. We actually shift three bits, three bits towards the right. Then we get one bit left shift. Similarly, uh, we uh, we shift two bits towards the right, and we'll get two bit left shifting. This is how it works. So we'll always be shifting towards right, but we'll be getting the result of left shift as well. It is the advantage of end round shift uh, shifters, and that's why we use the end round shifters. Now, a basic design of an end round shifter is this where these are the input input buses and these are the output buses say 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, if this is uh, uh, this this get signal is provided in two will be connected to O2. If this if this gate signal is provided in three will be connected to O3. Now if we want to shift one direction towards the right, what we would do? What we would do is we would switch uh, we would switch this switch on, which will which will uh, send in one to O0. Then we will switch this this switch on, which will send in two to O1. We'll switch this on, which will send in three to O2, and then we'll switch this on, which will send in uh, in four to O3. Now, this is one way to go, but there is a very uh, problematic element about this design. The problematic element being we have 
to from SW00 to SW33, we have 416. We have 16 switches, that is 16 control signals are required to shift all the uh, shift the signal to to one bit two bit or more so more control signal requires means more complexity to the circuit so we need to pro uh, solve this problem of complexity so we ha we are assuming that we we are assuming or we are designing in such a way that we are shifting either towards the right or towards the left that is we are shifting in one direction so what we can do is we connect we connect this switch input of this switch with this one again with this one again with this one similarly let us take another color so it will be easier we connect this switch with this one again with this one again it will be connected to this one similarly we are connecting it here uh, in the next step it will be connected here in the next step it will be connected here uh, we have another another switch this this will be connected firstly here then here then here that is uh, the gate uh, the gate control uh, which uh, the gate control at at any stage is uh, controlling the gate of the next stage uh, next stage so what it does is if we select switch 0 what it have what happens is it turns uh, out it makes the output as in 0 in 1 in 2 in 3 if we select switch this this second switch it makes the output as in 1 in 2 in 3 in 0 that is these are shifted by uh, shifted towards right by one direction if we choose this switch then it makes the output as in 2 in 3 in 0 in 1 that is shifted by two direction uh, by two bits if we choose switch 3 it will be shifted by three bits uh, in 3 in 0 in 1 in 2 that is by choosing either switch number 0 switch number 1 2 or 3 we are shifting, uh, uh, shifting the signal towards the right by 0 bit, 1 bit, 2 bit or 3 bit. So this is how 4 bit shift registers, uh, 4 bit shifters can be operational. The control signals become very, very easy and efficient. That's all for this lecture. Uh, in this lecture, uh, the topics that we have covered is from the basic VLSI design uh, by Pachnel. I have uploaded that book in, in UX already. Uh, the articles that we have covered are articles 7.2.1 and 7.2.2. This is for yourself studies. If you have any queries, you can you feel free to leave those uh, queries in the discussion box. Thank you.